Hey there nation, welcome to the show. We help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and now it's time for another edition of Hobby Side Videos. On this episode of Hobby Side, we are doing another army showcase. This time we are focusing on two more members from our Nicomunda Tells and Underhive Battle Reports. We are looking at the legendary Iron Sights of House Orlock, as well as legendary Precinct 13 of the Adeptes, Arbites, and Forcers. So, in anticipation for the new edition of Nicomunda that's rolling out, uh, we're doing a little series of Hobby Side videos showcasing the various gangs that we use for our Nicomunda Battle Reports. Uh, we're doing about two, uh, two different gangs per video. Uh, last time we talked about the uh, Escher as well as the Goliaths. Now we're focusing on Orlock as well as Adeptes, Arbides, and Forcers. So we're going to show you exactly what each gang looks like up close, talk about how we manufacture these guys and paint them up, and then we will talk, also talk about the, uh, you know, the kind of like the design philosophy behind these guys. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this on. And this time, instead of starting on the left-hand side, we will start on the right-hand side, and we will start with the Adeptes, Arbides, and Forcers of Precinct 13. All right, so let's go on and talk about Precinct 13, our Adeptus, our Buddies, and Forcers. This video is going to be kind of short for these guys because um, there wasn't really so much conversion work that were done these guys that we just kind of bought these guys from uh, different miniatures to kind of create this gang real quick for our, you know, maximum lawmen of the uh, 41st millennia, especially in Underhive of uh, Necromunda. So let's go and talk about that real quick. These six figures, all six of these guys, are actually from a line of miniatures called Ripper Miniatures, Reaper Miniatures, what they're called. Now, Reaper Miniatures has a very, you know, very eclectic collection of miniatures. They have sci-fi, fantasy, horror, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they're primarily kind of catered to the Pathfinder community too, for uh, role-playing games. That's probably what they make miniatures for. But they have a wonderful line of miniatures called the Bones series of miniatures. And the reason why I call, why well, I'm drawing attention to those guys, because those are made out of resin. And uh, that's what these six guys are. They're all made out of resin. See, so if you were to take them, you can actually kind of bend them, as you can see there. And uh, from the bone set, and the reason why I love that bone set so much is because you can get like packs of like two to three miniatures for like three dollars. It is like it is like my ultimate like my ultimate expression of cheap miniatures is the bone line series of resin miniatures made by Reaper Mini. I just, I just love those guys. I just I just buy packs. I just walk into my local game store, just buy packs of those things just to convert, just to chop up, to make new things out of it, and also to proxy because it's just great using a two to three dollar miniature that uh, that you use for something that usually costs fifty bucks and that you just can't beat it. So these six guys here, which is made up of Judge Fear, who's leader, uh, these three judges armed with guns as well. These two heavies, uh, they're from that line. Uh, I believe they're called IDF Planetary Forces. I believe is what they're called. This guy is like a named character who's like a special character. The same thing. These guys, the two heavies, uh, they're the same way. These three uh, judges that I call them, um, they're just uh, in a pack together, three pack for like three dollars. I think is what it's called. I think I spent like six bucks for all six of these guys, about a buck a miniature. So uh, yeah, very very easy kind of find. As you can see, uh, the paint scheme is pretty much exactly the same for all of them, and the reason why is because I kind of based the paint scheme off of Judge Dredd uh, from the movie Dredd. I believe that was done in 2014, I believe, when that movie came out uh, with uh, Carl Urban and... Uh I just, I just love, and Olivia Thoroughly, I believe was her name, Lena Henley played the villain. That, I just love that movie. I like the original Judge Dredd with Sylvester Stallone. I thought that was a cool movie too, but that movie Dread just like took it to the next level. In fact, that's what kind of inspired us to start making, uh, playing Nicaragua because, it, you know, Judge Dredd is very much like a Nicaragua-esque kind of story. So you can see we have the olive drab body armor, a uh, black body armor with olive drab armor plates. We have... Um, the gold shoulder to represent like their eagle and we have like the white shoulder board to kind of represent their number We painted the guns red with silver because you know, that's what judges do Helmets are painted red as well because that's kind of represent what the judges helmets look like So that's judge fear the leader uh, These guys are all painted exactly the same way of the uniform of all the gangs These guys are the most uniformly painted because you know, these guys are cops, you know, that's what they do. They they're uniform so they're pretty easy to do. So that's how all three of these were paying the same scheme. This is Judge, I believe his name is uh, Vasquez. That's right. Originally, that was the name of the character. He's armed with a heavy flamer. You see, let's see how good this miniature looks. You wouldn't think that this thing costs you like less than a dollar to, to, to get. It's just a, it's just amazing, amazing value. Here's Judge Drake, who is named after Drake, Corporal Drake from uh, Aliens. That guy who's armed with a smart gun. Guy gets killed. That's what, you know, Vasquez Drake, you know, from all those James Cameron aliens, aliens fans out there, you know, shout out. But anyway, so uh, yeah, that's how we made this guy. Very, very cool as well. Very, very simple to paint, and that's where they came from. Now, this guy, um, 
You know, to be honest with you, I don't know what miniature line he's from. It looks kind of steampunky, at the same time kind of sci-fi-y as well. I'm not really sure what line he comes from. The reason why is because when I was a kid, uh, Hobby Town USA, that was in the town that's next to me, they used to have this little bits box that you can buy pewter miniatures for, for a buck fifty. because, you know, I was a cheapskate since day one. So when I was in middle school, I bought a bunch of these really cheap sci-fi miniatures because I wanted to use them for Negramunda. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. So I'm not sure what this guy is. He just looks awesome. He's got like a forger cap. He's got armor plates and stuff. He just looks so so cool. You know, he's got his gear in his back. He's got like a bolt gun looking type thing and a blunderbuss type thing we thought looked really cool. So anyways, that's Judge Gosling. He's our handler for this guy. Now, anybody who plays 40k, specifically for Space Wolves, you know exactly what this guy is. He is a Fenrisian wolf. We used it for Cyber Mastiff. Uh, those Fenrisian wolves, all joking aside, you know, those Space Wolf Fenrisian, Fenrisian wolves are just some of the best looking sculpts that Games Workshop has come out with it for a long, long time. I feel like like this is what the Goblin Wolf Riders wolves should look like from Warhammer Fantasy. Like if you have like a whole army of these guys, you know, if, if all the Wolf Rider wolves look like this, and you put a crazy little goblin on the top, I mean, I, I would have to say I'd just buy an entire army of them. I'd just spend all my money just buying an entire army of those things because they just look so much character, so cool, so fierce, just a beautiful sculpt overall done by Games Workshop on that one. Now these three guys are from another line of terrain. Now here's the thing, I don't remember the name of the uh, company that makes these guys. Uh, it was some kind of urban warfare game where these guys were like SWAT team officers. Some kind of sci-fi urban warfare skirmish game. But the reason why I got these guys is because these guys came in packs of six for five dollars. Uh, they're pewter guys. See, this guy's armed with like some sub machine gun, some machine gun, and a shotgun. So I thought they just looked really cool. So I just bought them because they're super cheap. And uh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention the bases. Yeah, the bases are from Sector Imperialis uh, Warhammer 40k bases. Because uh, if you zoom in real close to them, let's take a look at this guy real quick. If you look real close to the base, you can see diamond plate. It looks very industrial. So all of our miniatures in Nickerman are pretty much based on those as well. So yeah, very very simple manufacturer, very simple miniatures. Not much, conver not no conversion work at all was put into any of these guys. Uh, just painted up, and uh, yeah, very happy with the results the way these guys came out with for our deputies and bodies enforcers. So with that being said, we're gonna move on now to our house Orlock Iron Sights. We'll talk about those guys next. All right, folks, now we're going to talk about the Iron Sights of House Orlock. Uh, these guys are called the Iron Sights. They're led by a man named the Toe Cutter, my buddy Warlord, uh, my friend, Fresh Prince Bel Air. Uh, he named the members of his gang off of the original Alkalite motorcycle gang from the original Mad Max film with Mel Gibson, the very first one. The main villain was played by Hugh uh, Keen Burns, I believe is the name of the guy's, uh, the actor's name. He's the same guy who played Morton Joe in the, in the remake from the 2014 remake. Um, anyways, so his name was the Toe Cutter. He had a guy named Bazzanetti. He also the Knight Rider. He had Johnny the Boy, and he had Kundalini and Mud Guts, and all these different kind of guys. He had named up the gang, and my buddy um, First Prince Belair named them all the same way, exactly the same way. And these guys are a mixture of both conversions as well as original miniatures that were from the original box set of Nick Ramunda back in 1995 when it first came out. Uh, the original box set had two gangs, Orlocks and versus Goliaths, and so this gang has a healthy combination of both. And of course, we also did a lot of converting as well. We primarily used Use uh, Katachan Imperial Space Marines, uh, sorry, Imperial Space Marines, Katachan Imperial Guardsmen, as well as uh, Chaos Marauders to create the look of these Orlocks. So let's go and start about real quick. So this guy here, this is the leader. This is the Toe Cutter. He's the legendary leader of the Iron Sights. As you can see, his whole miniature is pretty much the original um, Nicromunda uh, Orlock body, is what it is. We just chopped off the arms and the legs, uh, the arms and the head. So this arm here, this is from a uh, Katachan bolt gun. This head here is from a Katajan uh, Imperial Guardsman. This one I believe is from a Cadian uh, Cybernetic Arm with a Power Sword. Spirit Chaos Space Marine Bolt Gun. And uh, pretty much made this guy, made the Toe Cutter. This looks like a, like a little biker mutant dude with the vest, with the cutoff vest and everything. So that's why I made him. All right, let's talk about these heavies real quick. So this guy here, uh, this is from original uh, for the legs and the arm here on the left arm and the head. That's from the original uh, Nick Ramunda lineup for the Orlocks. They look like kind of like bikers. That's what they kind of look like. They have like sashes and boots and blue jeans and cut leather cutoff vests and a bandanas around their head. Now the arm here is from a uh, Cadian Flamer. So that's a clean flame arm, same thing with the flamer pack, and that's how we made this guy. I believe this is the Knight Rider, I believe who this guy, no, not the Knight Rider. This is Bubba Zanetti. 
that's his name. And then of course we have um, our other specialist as well. This guy is the most converted one that we have for the heavies. Uh, as you can see, the legs from a cast marauder, the torso and arms are from a Katajan Imperial Guardsman, same thing with the head. Uh, we just threw a plasma gun for him to carry around. So you can see that's the uh, marauder leg. We have an Imperial Guard canteen and uh, knife, as well as a bolt gun from a spare cast space bolt gun. And that's how I made this guy. I believe this is Mudguts, I believe who that guy is. All right. Now these two, these look very, very familiar because these guys are based off of the Dark Imperium Chaos Space Marine Chaos Cultist miniatures. This one was the Stubber. We just cut the head off and replaced it with a Katachan Imperial Guardsman head. So that's what we made that guy. I believe that's the Knight Rider. And this is no face. And this guy is just a straight up just normal Chaos Cultist. In fact, he's still wearing the necklace with the eight pointed Star of Chaos. We use that to make the Flamer for the... Uh, Iron sights. Now then, let's go and talk about the Jews real quick. The reason why I want to talk about these guys real quick is these guys are from like the original lineup for the most part. So this guy right here, I believe, is Starbuck. I believe who this guy is. I think no, wait, no, I forgot this guy's name. But anyways, this is an original, just straight up Nicaragua from the original box set. Stub gun, knife. This is what they kind of mostly look like for the most part. Like I said, very 1990s kind of punk look. You know, it's got like the sleeveless vest and stuff. So. Very, very cool. Same thing with this miniature as well, uh, except for the left arm, we cut that off and replaced it with a Katachan arm with a bayonet to make it look a little bit different, just to break up the similarities. This guy is an original Orlock, House Orlock guy from the box, original box set. He's carrying a pump action shotgun, so this guy is just from the old box set there. Now these guys here are also heavily converted as well. Uh, this guy, this is Starbuck, this is the sniper. Uh, as you can see, arm and body and head from the original set. Put a sniper cloak on the back with a telescopic last gun as well as a backpack. Uh, that's from the uh, Imperial Guard line. This guy here is also from the original uh, Necromunda box set. Bolt gun, body, head is the same. The arm holding the grenade, those, that's from the Katachans. And we also threw a back of that here, a last gun from the back of him. That's why we made that guy. Uh, this guy is another conversion. We have a Katachan Imperial Guard torso with arms, with a last pistol arm, as well as his head. Mount on the legs of a Chaos Marauder to get that sash and the biker kind of gear. And this axe here is from a Chaos Marauder as well. And that's why we made it this guy. So he's really cool. This one here is another heavily converted miniature. Uh, legs of a Chaos Marauder. The torso is from a Katachan... Uh, Katachan uh, Space Marine, uh, Space Marine, Imperial Guard. This gun right back here is actually from Orc Knob from, from 40k. Uh, I think it's just a shotgun, I think it's what it is, or just a shooter, I think is what they're called. It just looked really cool. We thought we could use that for a grenade launcher. Uh, the axe, of course, is a Chaos Marauder Axe, and the uh, arm is from a Chaos uh, Cultist uh, auto gun. That's what we made this guy, Katachan Head. I was like, this guy's wearing like a pair of wicked sunglasses, and he's just like, what's up? And then, of course, our very last character, this guy, is also made from a Chaos Marauder legs, Katachan arms, and torso, as well as head. He's carrying a last gun, as well as a sword. And that's how he made those guys. So, yeah, very, very fun to make these guys. A lot of conversion work went involved making this one. So, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up for this one, ladies and gentlemen. As always, please feel like to comment, like, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable, as always. Also, check us out on Google+, Plus as well as Facebook and Instagram for all the latest and greatest of what's going on for Hobby. So, that's going to do it for this edition of Hobby Side, ladies and gentlemen. We have, I think, uh, four more gangs to go, as well as some hired guns, and we'll be done talking about a Nick Window lineup. So, that's going to do it for this one, you guys. You guys stay classy. Peace out.